The Bell P-63 King Cobra is an American fighter aircraft developed by Bell Aircraft in World War II from the Bell P-39A Cobra in an attempt to correct that aircraft's deficiencies. Although the P-63 was not accepted for combat use by the United States Army Air Forces, it was adopted by the Soviet Air Force. Design and Development XP-39A While the P-39 had originally been introduced as an interceptor, Later in its development it was decided to reduce the cost and complexity of the engine by removing the turbocharger. High altitude performance suffered dramatically as a result, and Bell proposed an experimental series to test out a variety of solutions. The resulting XP-39E featured two primary changes from the earlier P-39D from which it was developed. One was a redesigned wing. The root airfoil, a NACA0015 on other models of the P-39, was changed to a NACA0018, to gain internal volume. The other was a switch to the Continental I-1430 engine, which featured an improved overall design developed from the hyper-engine efforts, as well as an improved supercharger. Three prototypes were ordered in April 1941 with serials 41 to 19,501, 41 to 19,502 and 42 to 7,164. The I-1430 was having continued development problems and could not be delivered in time, so it was replaced by an Allison V1710-47, similar to that powering the P-39. Each prototype's tested different wing and tail configurations, 41 to 19,501 had a rounded vertical tail, but squared off tail plane tips, 41 to 19,502, a squared off fin and rudder and large wing fillets, and 42 to 7,164 had all its flight surfaces squared off. The XP-39E proved faster than standard Aero Cobra reaching a maximum speed of 386 miles per hour, 621 kilometers per hour, at 21,680 feet, 6,610 m, during tests. However, the XP-39E was considered inferior to the stock P-39A Cobra in all other respects, so it was not ordered into production. XP-63 Although the XP-39E proved disappointing, the USAF was nevertheless interested in an even larger aircraft based on the same basic layout. Even before its first flight, the USAF placed an order on June 27, 1941 for two prototypes of an enlarged version powered by the same V-1710-47. The new design was given the designation XP-63 and serials were 41 to 19,511 and 41 to 19,512. A third prototype was also ordered, 42 to 78,015, using the Packard V-1650, the U.S. built version of the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. The XP-87897 was larger in all dimensions than the Aero Cobra. The wing was redesigned again, this time with new NACA laminar flow airfoils, 66, 215, 116 A equals 0.6 at the root and a NACA 66, 215, 216 A equals 0.6 at the tip. The wing taper ratio was approximately 2 colon 1, span was 38 feet 4 in, 11.68 M, and wing area was 248 SQ-4, 23.0 square meters. The engine was fitted with a second remotely mounted supercharger, supplementing the normal single-stage supercharger. At higher altitudes, when additional boost was required, a hydraulic clutch would engage the second supercharger, adding 10,000 feet, 3,000 m, to the service ceiling. A larger four-blade propeller was also standardized. A persistent complaint against the Aero Cobra was that its nose armament was not easily accessible for ground maintenance, and in order to cure this problem, the XP-63 airframe was fitted with larger cowling panels. In September 1942, even before the prototype flew, the USAF ordered it into production as the P-63A, Model 33. The P-63A's armament was to be the same as the current P-39Q, a single 37mm, 
1.46 in, M4 cannon firing through the propeller hub, two synchronized 0.50 in, 12.7 mm, machine guns in the cowl, and two 0.50 in, 12.7 mm, machine guns in underwing gondolas. The first prototype, 41 to 19,511, flew for the first time on December 7, 1942. It was destroyed on January 28, 1943 when its landing gear failed to extend. The second prototype, 41 to 19,512, followed on February 5, 1943. It, too, was destroyed, this time due to an engine failure. The Merlin engine 42 to 78,015, as Merlins were primarily needed for the P-51 Mustang, was delivered with another Allison instead, a minus 93, which had a war emergency rating of 1,500 HP, 1,120 kilowatts, at sea level, making this prototype one of the fastest King Cobras built, attaining 421 miles per hour, 678 kilometers per hour, at 24,100 feet, 7,300 m. Deliveries of production P 63 as began in October 1943. The USAF concluded the King Cobra was inferior to the Mustang, and declined to order larger quantities. American allies, particularly the Soviet Union, had a great need for fighter aircraft, however, and the Soviets were already the largest users of the Aira Cobra. Therefore, the King Cobra was ordered into production to be delivered under lend lease. In February 1944, the Soviet government sent a highly experienced test pilot, Andrei G. Kochetkov, and an aviation engineer, Fyodor P. Saprun, to the Bell factories to participate in the development of the first production variant, the P-63A. Initially ignored by Bell engineers, Kochetkov's expert testing of the machine's spin characteristics, which led to airframe buckling, eventually led to a significant Soviet role in the development. After flat spin recovery proved impossible, and upon Kochetkov's making a final recommendation that pilots should bail out upon entering such a spin, he received a commendation from the Irving Parachute Company. The Kinkabur's maximum aft CG was moved forward to facilitate recovery from spins. P-63A8, SN-269,261, was extensively tested at TSAGI in what was then the world's largest wind tunnel. Soviet input was significant. With the Soviet Union being the largest buyer of the aircraft, Bell was quick to implement their suggestions. The vast majority of the changes in the A subvariants were a direct result of Soviet input, e.g. increased pilot armor and fuselage hardpoint on the A5, underwing hardpoints and extra fuel tanks on the A6, etc. The Soviet Union even experimented with ski landing gear for the P-63A6, but this never reached production. Most significantly, Soviet input resulted in moving the main cannon forward, favorably changing the center of gravity, and increasing its ammo load from 30 to 58 rounds for the A9 variant. The P-63 had an impressive roll rate, besting the Americans P-47, P-40 and P-51 and the Japanese Navy's Kawanishi and 1K2 Shidankai fighter with a rate of 110 degrees per second at 275 miles per hour, 443 kilometers per hour. Swept wing L-39. Two war surplus P-63 CS were modified by Bell under Navy contract for flight testing of low speed and stall characteristics of high speed wing designs. The aircraft received new wings with adjustable leading edge slats, trailing edge flaps and a pronounced sweep of 35 degrees. The wings had no wheel wells, only the nose gear was retractable. L-39-1 first flew April 23, 1946, demonstrating a need for extra tail surface and rear fuselage length to balance the aircraft in flight the wing repositioning reduced empennage effectiveness and moved the center of lift aft. A lighter three-blade propeller from a P-39Q10 was mounted and the necessary changes to the empennage were made. L-39-2 incorporated these adjustments from the start. 
L39-1 later went to NACA at Langley for wind tunnel testing, where much valuable data were gathered. L39-2 also served as a test bed for the Bell X240 degree wing design. Operational Service Soviet Union The first version to be supplied in quantity to the Soviet Union was the P-63A7 with a higher vertical tail, and reinforced wings and fuselage. The fuselage proved to need strengthening, consequently in October 1944, a reinforcement kit for operational P-63S was developed. Air Transport Command ferry pilots, including U.S. women pilots of the WASP program, picked up the planes at the Bell factory at Niagara Falls, New York, and flew them to Great Falls, Montana and then onward via the Northwest staging route through Canada to Alaska, where Soviet ferry pilots, many of them women, would take delivery of the aircraft at Nome and fly them to the Soviet Union over the Bering Strait via the Alaska-Siberia route, ALSIB. A total of 2,397, 2,672, according to other sources, such aircraft were delivered to USSR, out of the overall 3,303 production aircraft, 72.6%. By a 1943 agreement, P-63S were disallowed for Soviet use against Germany and were supposed to be concentrated in the Soviet Far East for an eventual attack on Japan. However, there are many unconfirmed reports from both the Soviet and German side that P-63S did indeed see service against the Luftwaffe. Most notably, one of Pokrishkin's pilots reports in his memoirs published in the 1990s that the entire 4th Guards Fighter Aviation Regiment, 4GVIAP, was secretly converted to P-63S in 1944, while officially still flying P-39S. One account states they were in action at Königsberg, in Poland, and in the final assault on Berlin. There are German reports of P-63S shot down by both fighters and flak. Hans Rudel, highest decorated pilot of the Luftwaffe, states in his memoirs, we often encounter American types of aircraft, especially Aero Cobras, King Cobras, and Bostons. This was in the Kurland front towards the end of the war. Nevertheless, all Soviet records show nothing but P-39S used against Germany. In general, official Soviet histories played down the role of lend-lease supplied aircraft in favor of local designs, but it is known that the P-63 was a successful fighter aircraft in Soviet service. A common Western misconception is that the Bell fighters were used as ground attack aircraft. One of the enduring myths regarding the P-39-P-63 in Soviet use is that because of its armament, in particular the 37mm nose cannon, it excelled as a ground attack aircraft, even a tank buster. In translating and preparing this manuscript for publication, I have had the opportunity to peruse several Russian language sources. Mentions of the employment of this aircraft in the ground attack role are so rare in these sources as to be exceptional. The tank buster myth has its roots in the misunderstanding of the general wartime role of the Red Air Force and in the imprecise translation of specific Russian language terms that describe this role. The specific Russian language term most often used to describe the mission and role of the Arakobra equipped Red Air Force fighter units, in this manuscript and other Russian language sources, is Prykriti Yisuk Hoputnik Voisk. Frequent misunderstanding in this country as to the combat role of the P-39 in Soviet use is based in part on imprecise translation of the term Prykriti Yisuk Hoputnik Voisk to ground support. The latter term as it is understood by many Western military historians and readers, suggests the attacking of ground targets in support of ground troops, also called close air support. Did a Soviet Aerocobra pilot ever straff a German tank? Undoubtedly. But this was never a primary mission or strong suit for this aircraft. Soviet Army Colonel Dmitry Loza The Soviets developed successful group aerial fighting tactics for the Bell fighters and scored a surprising number of aerial victories over a variety of German aircraft. Low ceilings, short missions, good radios, a sealed and warm cockpit and ruggedness contributed to their effectiveness. To pilots who had once flown the tricky Polycarpov I-16, the aerodynamic quirks of the mid-engined aircraft were unimportant. In the Far East, 
P-63 and P-39 aircraft were used in the Soviet invasion of Manhukyo and northern Korea. In the Pacific theater, the King Cobras flew escort, close air support and ground attack missions. The Soviet P-63S achieved their first air victory on August 15, 1945, when Lieutenant I.F. Moroshnichenko from 17th IAP-190 IAD, shot down a Nakajima Ki-43 Hayabusa Ijaz fighter off the coast of North Korea. Sufficient aircraft continued in use after the war for them to be given the NATO reporting name of FRED. By May 9, 1945, operational units had still 1,148 King Cobras on strength. On October 8, 1950, two U.S. Air Force F-80CS from the 49th Fighter Group breached the USSR's border and attacked Suke Arika Airfield 19 miles, 31 kilometers, southwest of Vladivostok and 62 miles, 100 kilometers, from the Soviet-Korean border, making two strafing runs before returning to their home base. Although Soviet sources claim the attack was intentional, the pilots claimed it was a result of a navigational error. The airfield belonged to the Air Forces of the Pacific Fleet, VVSTOF, but it was occupied by the 821st Fighter Aviation Regiment, 821 IAP, of the 190th Fighter Aviation Division, 190 IAD. Mostly aircraft of the 1st Squadron of 821 IAP were hit with 12 P-63S damaged, one P-63 burned to the ground while the other damaged aircraft were able to be repaired. No human losses were suffered. France In 1945, 114 later models were delivered to the French Air Force, Armée de l'Air, but they arrived too late to see service in World War II. They however saw service during the First Indochina War before being replaced in 1951. Initially the French King Cobras were deployed to Algeria. Fighter Squadron, Groupe de Chasse, 2 Sixths Travail, previously equipped with P-39 Aira Cobras, received their King Cobras on July 18 at Casablanca, the pilots were surprised by the higher landing speed of their new aircraft. The King Cobra were scrambled to Indochina when the insurgency broke. Only 60 King Cobras were operational in Indochina in January 1950, mainly because the Americans refused to supply spare parts. Starting in February 1951, the squadrons equipped with King Cobras started to receive Grumman F-8F Bearcats as replacements. Most King Cobras were mothballed by July. The last flight of a King Cobra in Indochina took place on September 6, 1951. Pinball Operations Its main use in American service was the unusual one of a manned flying target for gunnery practice. The aircraft was generally painted bright orange to increase its visibility. All armament and the regular armor was removed from these RP-63 aircraft, and over a ton of armored sheet metal was applied to the aircraft. This was fitted with sensors that would detect hits, and these hits were signaled by illuminating a light in the propeller hub where the cannon would have been. This earned the aircraft the unofficial nickname of Pinball. Special frangible rounds made of a lead-slash-bakelite combination were developed that would disintegrate upon impact. These were known as the cartridge, caliber .30, frangible, ball, M22. In 1990, veteran pinball pilot, Ivan L. Hickman, wrote Operation Pinball about the training flights. Ray Testing British engineers, like the Americans, had a growing interest during World War II in the application of laminar flow airfoils. In an effort to learn more about the practical application of laminar flow airfoils, in 1945 the Royal Aircraft Establishment, Ray, undertook a flight test program with one of the two P-63As that the United Kingdom had received. The aircraft was equipped with a wake rake array mounted outboard, behind the wing, to allow the momentum deficit, and thus section drag, to be measured. The ray first tested it in an as-delivered configuration. The wing airfoil was designed to support laminar flow to 60% of cord. In the as-delivered configuration, a profile drag was measured which was representative of the wing section with boundary layer transition at the leading edge, 0% laminar flow. 
Reducing the surface roughness reduced the drag at low lift coefficients to a level representative of laminar flow to 35% of cord. Measurements were made of the surface waviness. This showed peak wave amplitudes, above the mean, of approximately 0.011 inches over a 2 inch span. The standard waviness criteria shows the critical wave height to be 0.0053 inches for this application. To reduce the waviness, Ray personnel stripped the wing to bare metal. The wing was then sprayed with two coats of primer paint and a coat of paint type filler. After the paint was dry, it was sanded in a cordwise direction, using sanding blocks, whose curvature matched the local surface curvature. This was repeated several times. Surface waviness was then measured and found to be no more than 0.005 inches. In flight, this configuration was found to have a profile drag representative of boundary layer transition at 60% of cord. This gave researchers an idea of what level of wing surface quality was required to actually get the benefits of laminar flow airfoils. Post-war air racers Numerous surplus P-63s ended up on the air racing circuit in the immediate post-war era. Charles Tucker purchased two P-63s from the disposal facility at Kingman, Arizona just after the war. He entered one of them, the Tucker Special as Race 28 with the name Flying Red Horse emblazoned on the nose, civilian register N62995, in the 1946 Thompson Trophy race. He had clipped the wing by 12 feet 9 in, 3.89 m, in an attempt to improve its speed, reducing the span to 25 feet 9 in, 7.85 m. The second one, 44 to 4126, XN63231 race 30, was intended for the 1946 Bendix Cross Country race. It was initially fitted with two wingtip drop tanks. In 1947, the drop tanks were removed and the wings were clipped to 28 feet 6 in, 8.69 m. Two other significant racers were flown later. Tipsy Miss, John Sandberg's clipped wingtip P63 Unlimited Racer, was identified as Race 28, and painted in bright orange, white and black race numbers with a chrome spinner. Later sold to a European pilot, this P-63 was destroyed in a fatal accident in 1990 Crazy Horse Campgrounds was the most radically modified P-63 King Cobra ever. Larry Haven's Race 90 Clipped Wing Unlimited Racer had a tiny bubble canopy installed, it appeared in all silver, unpolished aluminum, finish with a white rudder and black trim. The aircraft later crashed into the ocean on a test flight in 1972. Variants XP-63 Prototypes, 2, Company Designation was Model 24, Yuzaf Serials, 41-19,511 and 41-19,512. XP-63A Following the loss of the first two prototypes, an additional test aircraft was procured, Yuzaf Serial 42-78,015, originally ordered as a test bed for the proposed Rolls-Royce Merlin-powered P-63B. P-63A The production model Bell Model 33, 1725 P-63 as produced in various sub-marks. P-63B proposed Rolls-Royce Merlin-powered P-63B series was cancelled due to lack of availability of Merlin engines. P-63C second production series differed from the P-63A by being powered by the uprated Allison V-1710-117 engine with a war emergency rating of 1,500 HP, 1,120 kilowatts, at sea level and 1,800 HP, 1,340 kilowatts, with water injection. The wingspan was reduced by 10 inches, 250 millimeters. A total production run of 1,227 was completed. P-63D1 aircraft, 43 to 11,718, powered by an Allison V-1710-109, E-22, 1,425 HP, 1,063 kilowatts, featured a 10 in, 25 centimeters, wingspan increase, to 39 feet 2 in, 11.94 m, 
gross area being increased to 255 SQ Ford, 23.7 square meters, and, most noticeably, a rearward sliding bubble canopy. The series was cancelled in 1945. P63E essentially similar to the P63D with the exception of a ventral fin extension and the use of a standard cab style cockpit, only 13 built. P63F Bell Model 43 variant featured an enlarged vertical tail and Allison V1710-135, only 2, 43 to 11719 and 43 to 11722, built. RP-63A-C pinball target aircraft with 5 modified from P-63As and 95 modified on production lines, in 1948, surviving RP-63A aircraft were redesignated QF-63A. A further 200 production RP-63C aircraft were modified on the production line. Similarly, the surviving RP-63CS were redesignated QF-63CS. Many of the target aircraft were actually used as target tugs. RP-63G pinball dedicated flying targets which included two prototypes, 43 to 11,723 and 11,724, and 30 production aircraft that incorporated a flush dorsal inlet but, more significantly, lights that would come on when the target was struck with frangible munitions. In 1948, the remaining RP-63GS were redesignated QF-63GS. L-3092 war surplus P-63CS modified by Bell under Navy contract for flight testing of low speed and stall characteristics of high speed wing designs. Operators RP-63G pinball dedicated flying targets which included two prototypes, 43 to 11,723 and 11,724, and 30 production aircraft that incorporated a flush dorsal inlet but, more significantly, lights that would come on when the target was struck with frangible munitions. In 1948, the remaining RP-63GS were redesignated QF-63GS. L-3092 war surplus P-63CS modified by Bell under Navy contract for flight testing of low speed and stall characteristics of high speed wing designs. Operators Survivors Honduras On display P-63E 43 to 11730 Museo del Air, Tonkantin International Airport, Tegucigalpa Russia On display P-63A 42 to 68875 Russian Air Force Museum, Moscow P-63C 44 to 4011, Museum of the Great Patriotic War in Moscow. United Kingdom. Under restoration. P63C. 43 to 11137, under restoration at the Wings Museum, Balcom, West Sussex. The museum also has five other P63 airframes. United States. Airworthy. P63A. 42 to 68864 Pretty Polly, Palm Springs Air Museum in Palm Springs, California. 42 to 68941, Commemorative Air Force, Dixie Wing, in Peachtree City, Georgia. 42 to 69080 Fatal Fang, Yanks Air Museum in Chino, California. P63C. 43 to 11223 Legacy of Flight Museum in Rexburg, Idaho. Painted as P63A6/42-69021. P63F. 43 to 11719 Commemorative Air Force P63 Sponsor Group in San Marcos, Texas. On display. P63A 42 to 70,609, Military Aviation Museum in Virginia Beach, Virginia. P-63E. 43 to 11,727, Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona. 
It is on loan from the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson AFB in Dayton, Ohio. 43 to 11,728, National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson AFB in Dayton, Ohio. RP-63G. 45 to 57,295, Lackland AFB, Texas. Under restoration or in storage. P-63A. 42 to 70,255 Edith Louise, in storage at the Paul Garber facility of the National Air and Space Museum in Silver Hill, Maryland. RP-63C. 43 to 11,117, in storage at Fantasy of Flight in Polk City, Florida. Specifications, P-63A. General Characteristics. Crew, 1. Length. 32 feet 8 in, 10.0 m. Wingspan, 38 feet 4 in, 11.7 m. Height, 12 feet 7 in, 3.8 m. Wing area, 248 sq foot, 23 square meters. Empty weight, 6,800 pounds, 3,100 kilograms. Loaded weight, 8,800 pounds. 4,000 kilograms. Max takeoff weight, 10,700 pounds, 4,900 kilograms. Power plant, 1 times Allison V1710-117 liquid cooled V12, 1,800 HP, 1,340 kilowatts. Performance. Maximum speed, 410 miles per hour, 660 kilometers per hour at 25,000 feet, 7,620 m. Range, 450 miles, 725 kilometers. Ferry range, 2,200 miles, 3,540 kilometers. Service ceiling, 43,000 feet, 13,100 m. Rate of climb, 2,500 feet slash min, 12.7 m slash s wing loading 35.48 lb slash sq foot 173.91 kg slash m superscript 2 power slash mass 0 0.20 hp slash lb 0.34 kw slash kg armament guns 1 times 37 mm m4 cannon firing through the propeller hub from the A-9 version of the aircraft onward, the M-4 gun was replaced with the slightly improved M-1037 mm cannon, which used a disintegrating link ammunition belt, increasing the ammo capacity to 58 rounds, the M-10 also had a slightly higher rate of fire. 4 times 0.50 in, 12.7 mm, M-2 Browning machine guns, 2 synchronized in the nose, 2 in the wings. Bombs. 1,500 pounds, 680 kilograms, bomb load on wing and fuselage. Roll fighter aircraft. National origin United States. Manufacturer Bell Aircraft. First flight December 7, 1942. Introduction October 1943. Status retired. Primary users United States Army Air Forces. Soviet Air Force. French Air Force. Produced 1943 to 1945. Number built 3,303. Unit cost. 65,914 US dollars, 1945. Developed from Bell P-39A Recobra. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.